swimming in the deep things of God. You're having coffee with Conrad on... Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Got a little bit of a sore throat right now, don't I? Hmm, I don't get it. Sorry. This morning praying, we were praying, interceding for the body. I keep seeing this occurring theme um, wherever I go in the spirit. Oftentimes, I see I see people holding on to this rock wall that has writing in it, and, and to me, it looks like a large Ten Commandments uh, or or Torah or something like that. And if you look around the room. The people that are holding on to this wall and they, and they can't, they can't grasp it. That's one of the things that I'm saying is they have their hand on this wall and they're, they're turning the other way because they see Christ. It, it's an interesting vision that I keep seeing, um, uh, for a year or so. As people will be grabbing this, this rock wall. And there's grooves in it. And the grooves, I don't really understand. I think it's the writing, you know, how Jesus or how God wrote with the fing- his finger, the Ten Commandments. The interesting thing about it is usually when I see this, the room is dark and you can see that the people are groping the wall and they're trying to grasp it. They're trying to get something to hold on to. And I think that's important. In this dark room, you know, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. The light comes on in the room. And all of a sudden, from my vantage point, I can see that there's this wall all around the room. And there's there's grooves, there's writings all around the room. But I now have a vantage point to where I can see it all. There's a panoramic view. And I still see that people are afraid to leave the wall. (laughs) They're hugging the wall. And uh, it doesn't make sense from my perspective where I'm at. I'm in, I'm like in bathing, I'm bathing in the light, you know, I'm having fun. I'm out in the middle. So it reminds me of Ezekiel's river as he's, you know, he goes into his feet and he goes a little further up to his knees, then up to his waist. And then he's just like swimming in the deep end, you know, but he's still within the confines of the river. He's not going to fall out of the river. And this river comes from the throne room. You know, it originates from, uh, from God. That's pretty cool. But when I was a kid, in maturity, you know, you see the bigger kids, they can swim in the deep end of the pool. Now, I, at five years old, I was swimming at a very early age, holding my breath. I even practiced holding my breath in the bathtub because <laughs> I always wanted to swim. Later on, when I grew up, I'd be in Hawaii or California. I would snorkel for hours out there in the water. I'm like, going, yes, I'm swimming in the ocean. But something about me, I wanted to be in the deep end. Ever since I was little, ever since I was a wee little man. And I watched the kids, they jump up in the air and do these flips in from the, from the diving board into the deep end of the pool. And I thought, that is so cool. So there's this rope. There's this rope in the middle of the pool. And on one end is where you can walk. It's about three or four feet deep. And I wasn't even four foot tall, I don't think, because I tried to walk 
into the deep end. I tried to walk under the rope, and in that there would be this sharp precipice that would go down deeply, you know, where the sharks are. <laughs> That's what you think. And uh, so I'm I'm walking there, and, and my feet get a little bloody because I wasn't wearing sandals or anything. I was just in the pool, and the texture of the bottom of the pool kind of made my feet bloody. So I'm like, well, let's try another. Let's try another technique. Because I've got to get to the deep end. They're having way too much fun on the deep end. So I decided to hug the wall. On the wall, though, however different than this vision that I'm talking about, in the, in the wall in this room, there are people trying to grab the wall, but there's nothing to hold on to. So I would hug that little ledge throw the rope over my head and then I would be in the deep end but I'd still be hugging the wall and I'm I've got to experience the depth of this pool so I would hold on with one hand then every once in a while I would let go with one hand and I would begin to sink and I knew that if I didn't grab the edge of the wall, I would probably drown. So I went back and I held on to it. I don't know how old I was. I was very young. It was before I was swimming. I was swimming at a very early age, but this was before I was swimming, swimming. God has a destiny for all the believers, and it's to swim the deep end. It's to let go of the wall. It's to be in the light. That's what it is. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that have been happening to me recently. I've been learning about yielding to the Spirit and, and kind of like just telling the carnal mind to shut up. I've been getting irritated with myself. And I'm going to talk about a few scriptures today. Matthew twenty two fourteen. 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. I don't really know how that fits in with this story, but it has something to do with being chosen. We've got to have the wedding garment on. If you read that in Matthew 22, man was at the, the dinner and he didn't have the appropriate wedding attire on. He was in the deep end of the pool without authorization. <laughs> okay. So being in the deep end of the pool does require some maturity. But you know what? You're never going to go to the deep end of the pool or get into Ezekiel's deep end of the river if you don't desire it. And the Father desires you to get in to the deep things of God. Stop playing in the kiddie pool. So many people get into the door of salvation and they just hang out there. Dude, it's fun in the deep end. It's fun where the miracles happen. These signs fall on them that believe, and they're mind-blowing. Why hang out in the kiddie pool forever? It's not that much fun. As a matter of fact, it's bondage, <laughs> staying in the kiddie pool. So I'm thinking about yielding into the Spirit, right? Romans 12.1 I beseech you, therefore, brethren, get into the deep end. By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And this living sacrifice, I'm going to talk about, yeah, it's our reasonable service. Jesus died for us while we were yet sinners. We're not going to hell. We have eternal life. Amen? Well, I'm going to tell you something. This living sacrifice, life means we breathe. I mean, that's how we think of it in today's contemporary vernacular. Life basically means hanging out with Jesus, because even if you're not breathing, you get eternal life, right? Living sacrifice. Every breath and every thought coming under the submission of God. Now, if that sounds like bondage to you, you're in the kiddie pool. <laughs> you're in the kiddie pool. Let's go, let's read some more. Now, I want you to understand there is a destiny for each and every believer. God has revealed stuff to you, and you know this in your knower. You know this because when you were in the kiddie pool, God showed you the deep end. He put a desire in you to go into the deep things of God. So there's this idea of 
getting from the kiddie pool to the deep things. And yeah, we need to grow. We need to go from milk to meat. We need people to mentor us in how to swim. You know? And we need them to watch us as we attempt to swim. And then like the little John says, Hey, you've got, you got it. You need the, no one teach you how to swim anymore. You've got the unction, the Holy Spirit. It'll teach you how to tread water in these, in these times. Got to have somebody mentor you that knows how to swim in the deep things of God. Romans 6, 13 through 16. Actually, I'm going to focus on 13 and 16. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. And those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you're not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. In verse 16, it says, Know ye not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Now I want to talk to you about being a living sacrifice. Every every little breath that you take, sacrifice, be wholly acceptable unto God, and yielding your members. When we yield, when we walk after the Spirit, we're yielding to what the Spirit wants us to do. If the Spirit says, put on your Jesus shirt today, then put on your Jesus shirt today. Man, I'm going to tell you, there's also a point when you're at the deep end of the pool. You don't even have to be told to put on your Jesus shirt. How many, what, does your father have to keep telling you every day to tie your shoes? After a while, you know to tie the shoes on your own. (laughs) You don't have to seek God about every little thing. You've already give, been given authorization to walk in this certain area. You've gotten to the three feet level. You're out of the kiddie pool. You don't have to keep being told to get out of the kiddie pool to go to the three feet area. You know you can do three feet. That's your new boundary. And then, as we're yielding to the deeper things, you can go deeper with God. We've got to walk in our... in. That next little step of faith, some our mentor shows us that we can do this certain paddle, this certain thing, and we can sustain ourselves in this deeper area. Galatians 5, 24 through 26. And this, think of the room too. The room that I'm talking about is the fleshly approach to scripture. We're trying to hold on to it, and we, we're hugging it. We're so afraid to go do the things of the Spirit when the light just shows all the Scripture from inside the room. It's not telling you to get outside the room, right? And there's nothing to hold on to through the flesh anyway. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned. You must have the light of God to even understand them, right? Galatians five twenty four through 26 And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. So, we're crucifying the flesh, the lusts. But you know, one of the things that I've learned, by learning to wade, get out of the kiddie pool, go into the deeper end, there's things that weigh you down, that you can wear in the kiddie pool, like the life vests and all that stuff. And you can have weights on you in the kiddie pool, but once you start trying to tread water, that weight drags you down and tries to kill you. So what you want to do is you want to get rid of the weights of sin that so easily drag you down. And it's like the devil coming up, coming up and trying to drag you down. He's a weight. This We need to lay, lay aside the sin that so easily besets us. Just get rid of it. It's a weight, and it causes us to not swim deeply in the deep things of God. We need to walk in the Spirit. And then Romans 8, 4, and 5, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they of the Spirit the things of the Spirit. If we see the deep end of the pool, we see people 
God working miracles through the hand of Paul or through people that we know. And we're like, man, I want in the deep end. I want in the deep end. We need to mind the things of the Spirit. Even Ezekiel, when he went into the river, his feet, they were still holding on to the ground. Like the people were still trying to hold on to the wall. But eventually, in the end, he just went swimming and he got caught up in the deep things of God. So I want to ask yourself, let's think about being a living sacrifice, going into the deep things of God. Let's stop hanging out in the door of salvation, which is bondage, because you got one foot in the world. You keep putting one foot outside outside the door. You're like, well, I'm going to stay in the world and in heaven. Dude, that is no fun. It is con- There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. Do you realize every time you walk after the flesh, the devil heaps condemnation on you? He's the accuser of the brethren. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I did that. Man, I feel condemned. But walk after the Spirit. Then there's no condemnation. You go, you know, I'm walking after the Spirit. I didn't I didn't give in to sin. I didn't give in to the lust of the flesh. It feels so much better. I'm telling you, it's a bit much cleaner, purer, happier walk with Christ. And then you'll notice that if you're hugging the wall, you're still thinking, you're still looking at things carnally. You're still trying to hold on to those old doctrines that came up from the the vanity of men's mind. You know, the wisdom of the world is foolishness is in the eyes of God, and God is a spirit. Let him light the scriptures for you. Not discounting having a mentor. I'm always saying let's have a mentor, but make sure your mentor is swimming in the deep things of God. <laughs> Has the fruit of the Spirit. Has the fruit of the Sermon on the Mount. Amen. Deep things of God. Now, you, if we, if you're minding the things of the Spirit, you're going to be thinking about spiritual things. When you think, your thought life For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. What can I do for my body? What can I do that's selfish? But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Amen. So thank you for being a part of Conrad Rocks. God bless you. God bless you. I want to pray for you before I let you go. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for relationship. Lord, I thank you for those promises. Lord, I pray that whoever's listening to this podcast, that you revive that moment. You gave them a promise and it tickled their spirit with excitement. And they saw a glimpse of the destiny and the future that you have for them. Lord, I pray that you revive those old dreams that you've instilled into their life. Lord, I thank you that the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Lord, I thank you that you're calling your people higher, closer to you. Lord, I pray that we move from the door of salvation into the lap of Abba Father. Amen. God bless you. Like I said, thank you for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Let's make Jesus known and let's know Jesus first. Amen. Please consider uh, supporting Conrad Rocks. You can do so at the support page on ConradRocks.net, and share these episodes. Friends and family doing on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, doesn't matter. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher. Hi, this is John John Shabba House. This is the Kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries. This is Amy from Amy Daily. This is Tiffany White with Hey Ministries. This is Dan the Coffee Man. This is Glenda Linkus from WingsOfProphecy.com. Jill Dyson from Angel Street Ministry. This is Teacup Ministry for Women. This is Marianne Sansom from Google Plus. This is Charles Michael from France. Ministries.org. Jackie Smith from the Intentional Christian Panure Podcast. This is Janet with Overcoming Abuse God's Way. Spreading-joy.org. This is Gerald Thomas in New Hebron, Mississippi. This is the Mordecai from Oklahoma. This is Vicki at Michael's House of New Beginnings. This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan. We are happy coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rock.